Hi, welcome to the first video blog from Stash and Notions. I thought I'd have a go at making one this year to show you what I got from the Bendigo sheep and wool show yesterday. Um, this is partly as by way of apology to my Richmond knitters friends because I can't make it tomorrow, working from home and not heading into the city, and also to share it with everybody else in the interwebs. Grab yourself something to drink, follow my lead and have a nice tawny port, a cup of tea, whatever suits you. And let's get into this, shall we? Right. First cab off the rank was my first purchase for the day. This was from my friend Chantelle who go, trades under the name Fiberific. I love her colourways. They are so pretty. This one is uh, called Tiffany Splodge Close and it is 25 grams of her sunflower base and it forms part of a kit that becomes um, a pair of wrist warmers. So you pick out your own beads and I picked these little greeny goldy ones that I thought would go well um, and you get the pattern and some flossy stuff actually it's oral B dental floss to do the beading with and away you go so I've never done beading before and this will be my first foray into it and I will let you know how I go um, next one this is beautiful you know me and Teal I can't help myself whenever I see something from it it's from Little Dipper Yarns Again, another friend of mine, her name's Ursula, and she dyes the most beautiful colourways. And this one is so soft and squishy. It is her Andromeda base, which is 70% alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. The colour, and now correct me if I'm mispronouncing it wrong, it's Dacelo or Dorello. Um, not sure of the handwriting there's that and that's probably more of a reflection of me and look I've already got a hair attached to it but oh love it love it love it don't know what this one's going to become yet but I did only buy one skein probably a cow because I can't bear to have it anywhere except near my face right now the next one this is from Mayhem and Chaos they're another Victorian based dyer and I got two skeins in the eight ply or DK weight of a colorway called Inky Love. Now, um, let's get that up there close so you can see that beautiful colorway. Oh, I love it so much. Um, I suspect this one will also become a scarf or maybe a cowl and hat set, possibly even mitts. We'll see how we go after my last foray into mitts might be giving that a bit of a break for a while. So this is a superwash merino. And I think I made <laughs> someone very unhappy by picking up these two skeins because I thought this time rather than buying lots of single skeins all over the place, I would go with the more targeted two or three skeins in the same colorway so that I could make bigger items. But yes, I broke somebody's heart by getting these two because they thought it would be perfect for a project they're currently working on. But I think we made up in the end when we were sitting and knitting together later in the day. So yes, Mayhem and Chaos, Crazy 8 Superwash, if you love. Next one on the list is a manufactured one from Peru. It is um, the Fibre Company and it is their Road to China Worsted Weight. Um, I got this one and the next couple from Zigo Zago who have popped back up as a boutique studio so you can talk to them online or make an appointment to go and visit them at their studio in Castlemaine or yes if you get lucky and they have a stall at an event near you you can go and pick it up there. So this one Road to China is a combination of baby alpaca, cashmere, camel and silk and Again, it is so beautifully squishy. This colorway is called Sapphire. And I picked up three skeins of it in the worsted or 10 ply, 10, 12, 12 ply so that I can again make something that's of a decent size, probably a scarf again, maybe a hat. Who knows? We will find out. Okay, again from Zigo Zago, I picked up two Madeline Tosh skeins, uh, sorry, Tosh Merino Light, um, also from Zigo Zago. We've got the Oceana, which is this lighter tealy blue. It's not quite registering on the camera. It's a little more greeny than that's showing. And then this one, which is called Baltic. 
And I thought I would put the two of these together and stripe something. Not sure yet, probably sure. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Now this next one I absolutely love. It is from Melbourne based Dyer Thimble and Pearl and it is a colourway called Violet Beauregard. Yes, named after the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory character. So it's a beautiful purpley, blueberry, blue, tonal, variegated scrumptiousness and I cannot wait to see what this one becomes. It will speak to me and a pattern will be revealed and I can't wait to get my hands in and get this knitted up into something fabulous. I thought recently that I needed a purple accessory of some sort and so you cannot tell you how excited I am that this is what fell into my basket and came home with me to be that project. Okay. Um... That was sort of my main part of the day and then I wandered back down to Fibre at Feet for a final hug and a goodbye and falling into my basket was this one. Fibre for spinning, it's 50% uh, 50% Mongolian cashmere and 50% Tussa silk and it's called Equinox and I put my hands on it and I just had to buy it. That's just the way it goes sometimes is you, you wander in and you see something pretty and squishy and it just has to come home with you. That's the way it is. I did also pick up some other fiber <laughs> and this one I magpied it. It is from Wool and Wire and it is a bat that's made of merino, black diamond, mulberry silk, corridale glitz and angelina. And I have promised that I will spin it soon and then send pictures back to the dyer. She wants to see what it becomes. I think she was secretly hoping no one would want it. No one would be crazy enough to buy it. But what can you say? I did. But while I was there, I did also pick up some beautiful little stitch markers. Because one can never have enough stitch markers. And this shawl pin. I, I don't know why, I just really like that double treble clef business that's going on here. And oh, I forgot to mention oh, one of my favourite styles of stitch markers. Let's see if we can get that up. Again, from Fiberific. They're called blinglets and they're basically snagless little tiny balls of joy. They're so good to have on your knitting projects because, yep, they don't catch. They slip easily from one needle to the next and they're pretty because let's face it why have stitch markers if they're not pretty so I think no that's all I got from the show and then I wandered down to what is colloquially known as the muster but is officially called something like the artesian uh, fiber crafters and textiles festival show thing it's basically it's the spin-off or fringe festival to bendigo sheep and wool show i think there was a bit of a drama a few years ago and people went different ways and so we have two shows for the price of one everyone loves the muster spent the day sitting and knitting with some dear lovely friends and it just this is the thing that makes your heart sing so i'm gonna pause for a sip of my wine now I will show you the one thing that I got from there. Six balls. Six balls of this colorway that's called Quarry Stone. Yep, it's gray. Why did I get six? It's going to become a cardigan or sweater or whatever you like to call those things. Um, it's going to, I'm going to use a pattern that's called Basic Black. <laughs> and yesterday afternoon at the end of the day when I was really tired, looking at my um, quantities that I needed for this I did actually make notes so I knew how much to buy so I could get it all from one dial and all of that business um, when I saw basic black next to it I'd forgotten that that was the name of the pattern and thought that was the color I needed to have but this charcoal gray deliciousness is good 
never actually knit anything in pure black. I always seem to go for the greys instead. So keeping on trend here with something that works. And it is a lovely soft merino. There's no scratch in it whatsoever. It's um, ethical, super fine merino from Tasmania in the Midlands. Um, so, you know, us Tassie peeps, yarns, whatevers, we all have to stick together. So that's probably not going to happen for a while until I catch up on all the other knitting I've got to do. Promise to get my works in progress off the needles before I cast on anything new. And somehow I have no recollection of this, but I've signed up for a cow that kicks off on Friday, probably Friday American time, so Friday, Saturday Australian time um, for a Philosopher's Stone knit along. Um, going to use some Madeline Tosh that I was gifted earlier in the year for that one, so that's all good to go. Um, I think, oh, one last thing. I keep finding more things. I may have spent a bit of money yesterday. This buttons. Yes, my buttons. All the buttons for me. Um, vintage buttons. This haul cost me about 25 bucks. Um, so I've got two choices here, which the green or the blue. One of these are going to go on my cardigan from last year's Cardi Knit Along that still is languishing in the whip pile because I need to do all the seaming and I... I have learnt the hard way from this particular project that if it's not knit all in one piece, I'm, I'm probably going to take forever to get it done. Um, there's also some random brown buttons that I have no idea why I bought them because I have no brown yarn. <laughs> it's a mystery. But anyway, I have them. I'm sure they will get used at some point in the future. And then. It just keeps going. Now this one, this one is called Spinner's Balm and I bought it at the very end of the day at the muster when I was tired and my hands were dry and somebody else had used, bought some earlier and raved about it. It's made from beeswax and coconut oil and a few other bits and pieces and it smells divine and it's lavender free um, but the maker doesn't have her name on it so I don't know who made it but thank you this is the most wonderful product ever it is going to last me for at least a year it is coming to work and sitting on my desk rather than being kept at home for my spinning uh, because a little bit goes a long way it's not greasy it smells divine and handling paper all day is far worse for my skin than spinning is so this was a great find and I'm really happy. So there you have it guys. That is my little haul from yesterday at Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show. What do you think? Should I make more of these? Is it a one-off? Um, I don't know. You tell me. Um, thanks for watching and yes. Do all those likey, share, subscribe things or not if you think I'm a bit shit. Happy knitting and talk soon. Bye.